Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at St. Luke, whether you're here with us in the room or those of you that are joining us online through the live stream, we are so happy that we are all together in worship wherever we are. The Spirit of God moves in all places and unites us in worship today. I want to begin by this morning right off reading a familiar Bible story from Matthew chapter 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem and the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd his people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may go and worship him. After the Magi had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose, when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Kings, they were called sometimes in the history of the church. Magi, astrologers, magicians, scholars. These are all words to describe over the course of the history of the church who these guys were. Philosophers, priests, counselors to kings. They've even been called diplomats. We have most often in our day called them wise men. These wise men were following the wisdom of the world. If you want to find out where the newborn king of the Jews is, where do you go? Well, of course, you go to the capital city of the Jews, Jerusalem. But that's not where Jesus, who Paul called the wisdom of God, that's not where Jesus was. So right from the start, right from the start of Jesus, the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God we're not on the same page. We are continuing our series today titled The Hidden, Hidden Wisdom. Last week, Pastor Mike kicked this off so well, and he taught this. Christ is the wisdom of God, which comes right from Paul. Christ is the wisdom of God. Today, we're going to learn this. The wisdom of the cost. The wisdom of the cost. Again, it is so good to be together. I invite you to stand and let's enter into worship today.
blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love. Praise God, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love. For God so loved the world that He gave us His one and only Son to save. For God so loved the world that He gave us His one. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. If you don't remember anything else from today, just know that God loves you. He's chosen you and he calls you his own. sun sets free oh it's free ending i'm a child of god yes i am free at last he has ransomed his grace while i was a slave to Yes, he died for me, who the sun sets free, always free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free, always free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I. child of God. Yes, I am. Let these next words sink into you today. 
I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. Father, thank you for loving us and calling us your children. As a wise father, you guide us all our days, but as stubborn children, we like to go our own way and we fail to understand your wisdom. Speak through your Holy Spirit living in us and help us to understand your wisdom, the cross and the cost of following Jesus, because we know that you always want what's best for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. We want to invite the kids forward for a children's message. Come on down, guys. Oh, is somebody, I hope somebody's coming forward. Okay, good, good. Come sit right here, guys. Good morning, good morning. Do you have a good Christmas? Were you in New York City? I saw on the Facebook, that was awesome. You look like you had a great time. Say, um, how are you with the dark? Are you sometimes a little scared of the dark? Not? Are you better than I? Man, I, get, I can get scared. Of that. So uh, here's what I imagine. What if right now you got like, boom, transported to a forest path and it was completely dark? And you're by yourself. Be you cool with that? No. Yeah, and neither would I. So that would be scary. It can be scary when you're in the dark. You don't know where you're going. You got to get down a path. And if you don't have a light, what might happen? You might get lost. You might get lost. What's that? You might trip and fall. Of course, we imagine that there's lions and tigers and bears, oh my, out there. But that's probably not true. But we imagine it, and it makes it harder. But if you have something to light your path, that makes all the difference, doesn't it? Like a flashlight or, back in the day, a lamp. A lamp. It's a lamp. It's a kind of a lamp, yes. There's oil in here. It won't explode. It looks like a bottle. It actually was a bottle of wine at one point. Um, but we repurposed it, which is always a good thing to do. So if we had a light and we're in the dark path at night, we can't see, this would help us out, wouldn't it? Yeah. So I want to teach you a Bible verse about this. So you're gonna, I'm going to say some words. You guys are going to join. 
and you repeat after me. Your word word is a lamp unto my feet feet. and a light unto my path. path. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. (laughs) Wow, that just got really bad. (laughs) Your word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. You know what that's teaching? It's teaching that God's word is a light that will guide us in life. Not so, it's not so much talking about physical darkness, like if we're out in the woods at night without a light. It's talking about in life when sometimes it gets confusing or something ha- something's happened that we don't like and we wonder why or we're, we don't know, you know, about certain things and we're confused and maybe we're scared even or mad or sad. That God's word will light our way through that darkness, that path. I want you to understand, guys, that this book, the Bible, contains God's wisdom for our lives. And it's going to light your way the rest of your life if you stay connected to this word. I don't think you're going to have to put that book so close to the light. (laughs) Well, it's below it, so it's not going to catch fire, but, you know. That's a good good caution, though. It would be unwise to do that, wouldn't it? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for these young disciples that as they grow and they go through life and they have some dark times, that you would be the light to their life, that you would reveal your word to them, that they'd be connected to your word always, and that it would be the guide and the light of their life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you need to show me to show your way back, or can you see? I can see. Okay, good. Have a good day, guys. Thank you. Morning. My name's Paul, and I'm going to be reading our lesson today. For those of you who are reading along, we're going to start with uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 55, beginning at verse number 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Next reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those of you who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. 
Last reading today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 16, beginning at verse 21. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. This is the word of the Lord. It's like a game of Jenga, I think, here. Here is some, although not all, of my what would be called or could be called self-improvement books, self-help books, leadership books. Do you have books like this? If you have a book like this, raise your hand. You know, that tells you how you can improve yourself, get better at something. You know, your life, your finances, your work, your leadership, self-help books. This is the one I just grabbed the other day. I was doing a wedding at a Roman Catholic church, and they had these books out here for free. It was called by Matthew Call, Kelly called Life is Messy. Matthew Kelly is the one that coined the term, I wonder if you've heard this, that you, we strive to be the best version of ourselves. Have you heard that? The best version of ourselves. That's kind of what self-help, self-improvement books are about, becoming the best version of ourselves. This is a big industry, what might be called the personal development industry. In 2013, there were 30,897 of these books in print. Six short years later, in 2019, look at the growth. 85,253. You want to write a book to get published? Write a self-help book. Write a self-improvement book. It's the third most popular genre among literature. And 73% of the people who buy these kind of books or go on blogs or, you know, podcasts or go to seminars, 73% are under 45. So it's kind of the hip happening thing to do. Sales of these kinds of books spike during Christmas. People get them for Christmas. Anyone get a self-help, self-improvement book for Christmas this year? Raise your hand. Anybody? You're lucky. <laughs> you know, you get this book at Christmas, you open up, and you're like, great. It's like the new tie, I think, for Christmas gifts. The global personal development market size in 2020 was nearly $40 billion. One of the quotes I read said, people are more interested than ever in improving themselves. Well, that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that to seek to improve yourself. And it's a great industry, obviously. I am going to say that this kind of literature... And all the things associated with could be termed wisdom. Wisdom. How to live wisely. How to live your best self. We are in a series called Hidden Wisdom. Where we are uncovering 
what may be the hidden wisdom of God as it's found in Scripture, the wisdom of the Bible, kind of taking the lead from the account of the wise men. Here's a kind of challenging question for us today. Where does the wisdom teaching in the Bible fit in your biblical theology? Now you went, oh, that seems like a really intellectual question. In other words, as you understand the different writings in the Bible, and they're not all the same kind of writings, but as you understand the different writings of the Bible, where does wisdom fit in in your thinking, your theology, your understanding of biblical writing? I invite you to consider this kind of formula. The law, the gospel, the wisdom. Notice where the, the direction of the arrows. The law in Scripture, I'm just giving you a framework for this series we're in so you can know where to put it. The, the law is that the writings in the Bible that convict us, that teach us what God's values are. And most often, at least for me, I read those and I'm like, I'm not following that very faithfully. It leads us to a deeper understanding of our sin, of our brokenness, of our rebellion against God. And then that then drives us or compels us to cling to the cross, to cling to the good news, the gospel that sets us free from the condemnation of being under the law. Now, the law doesn't disappear. It's not set aside in any way. Jesus made that clear. The, but the law has the function of helping us understand that we can never be good enough in our own work, in our own thoughts and behavior to be right with God. But the law then drives us to cling to the cross, the good news that because of Christ, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The good news that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. As we sang earlier that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that all who believe might not perish, but have eternal life. That's the law and the gospel, and then that leads to the value of wisdom, or what the New Testament most often calls exhortation. Now, here's the thing. You can't go the other way on this one. You can't start with the wisdom and their exhortation and say, if I just live this way, if I live my best self, then, you know, I'll have the good, good stuff. It doesn't work that way. It's only as a response. And so what Pastor Mike and I are teaching in this series, I want you to put it in the right place, in the right position. Don't put it farther forward in the process. Here's a question. So is the wisdom of God in the Bible, is it just another self-help book? Self-improvement writing? Yes, in a way it is. Teaching us how to live wisely. But something is radically different about the wisdom of God. It's not what you think it would be. Just like the wise men thought the newborn king of the Jews would be in the capital city, Jerusalem, because that's what the wisdom of the world thought, and they were misguided. So is it with God's wisdom. It is not what you think. It doesn't, doesn't fall into our typical understanding of a self-help or self-improvement book. Here's one verse we read today. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declare the Lord. The Lord is saying, the wisdom that you have doesn't match up with the wisdom I have. We also read this. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the intelligent and the intelligent are frustrated. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? What God, how God is evaluating our wisdom. And this teaching from the Apostle Paul that we read. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since the wisdom of God 
the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. The wisdom teaching in the Bible says it clearly. That what we might think is wisdom, what we count as wisdom of the world, in our thoughts, in our best judgments, he might call foolishness. Or he frustrates it. See, it doesn't always match up. There's a good chance, there's a good chance that our wisdom, the wisdom of the world, is in the opposite direction of the wisdom of God. I'm not saying it's always the case, but there's a good chance that what we read as wisdom or self-help or self-improvement might be opposite of the wisdom of God. Here's a prime example. Jesus once started wisdom, his wisdom this way. Whoever wants to be my disciple must. Now, how would the wisdom of the world, how would writing like these books, how would it finish that sentence? Well, there's probably thousands of ways that these books here finish that sentence. Whoever wants to be my disciple must be fit, must solve conflicts well, must be a good leader, must whatever it is. That's the wisdom of the world. And now I want you to tell, hear me. I'm not saying this is bad stuff. Obviously, I'd be pretty hypocritical to say that because I have a lot of these books, and I've read a lot of them. But this is the hidden wisdom that Jesus gave. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. That's opposite of what books like this mostly teach. Because the self-help industry, the self-improvement industry, is all about us being our best self, about improving ourselves. And Jesus says, you must deny yourself and take up your cross if you're going to be my disciple. Jesus added this. Forever wants to save their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for me will find it. Now, if you've read this kind of literature, you're typically not going to find that in here. I mean, sometimes it shows up. It does. In some of these books here that I've read, it, it will sometimes show up. But it's usually about how can I improve myself? How can I better my life? In other words, how can I save my life? And Jesus said, no, my wisdom is that you lose your life. And then it will be saved. Think of the context that Jesus said these words. And this is a great example. Jesus says, here's what's going to happen. He's with his disciples. Here's what's going to happen to me. I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to be arrested. I'm going to be crucified. And on the third day, it rises again. Peter, functioning in the wisdom of the world, says, no way is that going to happen, Lord. And Jesus' response is, get behind me, Satan. You you do not have in mind the, the things of God, but the things of the world. You see, so often, dear ones, what we really strive after in our wisdom can be opposite of this teaching to deny ourselves, to die to ourselves so that we might follow God. Here's the takeaway for today. God's wisdom for our lives is to die to ourselves so that we will be able to love God above all else and love others as Jesus loved us. You see, I don't know about you, as I've read these books, sometimes, not sometimes, oftentimes I'd say, I fall into the trap of starting to put the principles or wisdom of what's taught here above God, above my trust in God. If I just do this better, then everything will be right. Then I'll be enough. 
That's loving that more than loving God. Or if I do these things, my life will be great. Whereas Jesus is saying, no, we live more for others than for ourselves. We die to ourselves so that we will keep God first in our lives and love others as Jesus loved us. How did Jesus love us? He was crucified. He denied himself and gave up his life. This is not the wisdom most people often teach in how to become the best version of yourself. The hidden wisdom of God is upside down and backwards from the wisdom of the world. Everything in what Jesus taught and in the way he lived and died reveals this hidden wisdom of God to die to ourselves so that we'll be able to love God above all others, above everything else, and to love others as Jesus loved us. Now, this may seem foolish to the world. This may seem foolish to the world. Maybe you've had experiences where living out this hidden wisdom of God, of denying yourself, has someone has said, why are you doing that? That doesn't seem really smart. It will often seem wisdom to the world. The Apostle Paul told us people would think it's foolish to die to ourselves in order to live for God and others. He said the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. And then Paul goes on to say this. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It is the wisdom of God. It makes sense to us. Given our mission, which is to lead people in a growing relationship with Jesus Christ, to sacrifice so that others may come to know Christ, whether that, that's financially or with our time or with our talent. Given what our mission is, this does make sense. It to us is the power and wisdom of God, even though it's backwards and upside down from the way the world functions. So here it is again. The message of the, uh, God's wisdom for our lives is to die to ourselves so that we'll be able to love God above all else and love others as Jesus loved us. How does that work in your life? Where is it that you need to deny yourself, take up your cross? That's between you and God. I can't, I, I do, I'm not way, I'm not wise enough or aware enough to go around and say each one of you, this is where it needs to happen to you. But here's what can happen. You can ask God, where is it that I need to deny myself? Where do I need to take up my cross? And if you just sit in silence and listen, I trust that God will reveal that to you. But, Here's some next steps to consider in this process. Here's the first step. Identify one bit of the world's wisdom that you're relying on more than you should. What's something that you've read in a book or seen on a blog or gone to a seminar and heard or a workshop and you, it's good, it's good, it's wise, but you're relying on more, you're relying on more than you should. And if you're like, I'm not sure what that is, again, ask God. I trust he'll say, yeah, here it is. And then the second step is this. Put this bit of wisdom in its proper place of your priorities. Hear me, dear ones. I'm not saying this is bad or evil in any way. That would be very hypocritical of me. I mean, look at all the books I have on this. What I'm saying is it needs to be in its proper place, in its proper priority. It should not be more important than the hidden wisdom of God, which we're learning today is to deny ourselves. And we're going to go on with the rest of this series about other hidden wisdom. It just needs to be in its proper place. And then the third step, recommit yourself to trust in the hidden wisdom of the cross above the wisdoms of the world. A little incentive here as we end. Following Jesus, the path of following Jesus is a death and resurrection. 
That's a wonderful way to understand it. It's a death and resurrection. Well, in order to, what is the prerequisite to being raised from the dead? You got to die. It's, you can't be raised unless you die. If we want to live the new life, if we want to be raised to live the new life that God has for us, we first have to die. Die to ourselves. Die to our agendas. That's the message of the cross. We sang just a few minutes ago that to bring all our failures and addictions to the cross. Remember when we sang that? We also need to bring all our successes and triumphs because at the cross, they all come to an end. All our ways, all our agendas of making ourselves right, our schemes, our imaginations of how to make ourselves right, they all come to the end at the cross. And we're left with only Jesus. That's the message of the cross. What Paul said people are going to think is foolish. In order to be raised to new life, we first have to die. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us with something that we're not comfortable in doing, and that is to die to ourselves so that we will be able to love you above all else and to love others as Jesus loved us. Help us with this difficult and what the world thinks is foolish wisdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
what can I bring to so faithful a friend, to so loving a king? Savior, what can be said, what can be sung as a praise of your name for the things you have done? Oh, my words could not tell. spirit and truth pouring out the oil of love as my worship to you in surrender i must give my every part lord receive the sacrifice of a broken heart lord receive the sacrifice of a broken heart Lord, receive the sacrifice of a broken heart. My friends, the good news is the Holy Spirit uh, has been poured into our lives uh, generously by God. And because of that, we can offer our prayers boldly uh, for the church, the world, and everyone in need. So let's do that. Let's pray together. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, you gather us as the church and send us out in mission to share the good news of your Son, Jesus. Inspire your faithful people to be fervent in prayer and service, that we might connect people into a growing relationship with your Son, Jesus, our Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would establish among the nations and in our own nation the blessings of peace. Will you raise up leaders who will protect vulnerable people in their care? Strengthen advocates who risk reputation and retaliation for the sake of mercy and justice. Lord, so kindly you protect us through the troubled times of this life. We pray you assure us that, again, that you, we will not be cut off from, your, from you by illness or despair, anxiety or pain, confusion or weakness or anything in this life. We pray your comfort on all those who are in need. We pray especially this morning a number of people, Lord, we, we just commit them to you. Pat Patterson and Janice Ebert, George King, John Savage, Tom and Diane Radke, Amy, Phil, and William House, Belinda Desario, Paul Davis, Tom Ballantyne, Tim Becca, Kenzie and Ella Scott, Kate Knapp, Maria Rue, Ron Foltz and Jeff Trailer, the Frost family, for Janet Dixon and Kevin No, for Easton McGann and Meredith Miller, for Jack Haran and Cooper White, for Lonnie Jenkins, Isabella Tishi, Catherine Miller, Carol Backus, and Caitlin Dugan. Lord, hear these prayers for these individuals and all those we name before you in our hearts and minds. And Lord, you created your saints for your glory, and we give you thanks for those you've called by name into your eternal embrace. And we pray especially this morning for the family and friends of Justin Baker and the family and friends of Mahima Kumari, that they be comforted in grief and released from fear. And Lord, since we have such a great hope in your promises, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. So we're so happy that we can be together uh, virtually or in person. Uh, thank you uh, for joining us for worship and responding to the Spirit's call uh, to come together as His church. So just a few announcements for our life together. In your bulletin, there's a connection card. Online, there's one as well. You might want to take that out, fill it out. That's helpful for us to uh, receive that. On the back are some opportunities for you um, to be involved with our congregation. Uh, just a couple highlights. Uh, on the, in two Sundays, January 23rd, we're going to have our pulpit exchange. That's pretty awesome. And that's going to be, we've been planning for this for a few months. We've had to postpone it a couple times because of some other circumstances. So this, we are confirmed. January 23rd, Tyus Ned will be here from International Christian Center and some folks from that church. 
and Pastor Steve will go there and preach on that Sunday. Uh, so you're welcome to go to, with Pastor Steve to International, International Christian Center and worship there with that worship uh, com worshiping community there, or stay here and hear from Tyus Ned. It's a win-win. I mean, it's going to be awesome. Tyus Ned, I've known for many, many, many years, and he's an incredibly great pastor and teacher and preacher. Uh, somebody definitely to listen to as much as Pastor Steve is as well. So uh, on in your bulletin, there's a QR code. You can click on that and uh, find the International Christian Center website. So you can just check out their church uh, virtually as well. So I invite you to do so. Uh, we have a Life with God coming up, a Life with God class coming up at the end of this month on January 30th. Um, it's free. Child care is available. A delicious meal will be served. So if you are, it's a perfect class for those who are investigating the faith, like to become a member, or like to get married at St. Luke. Uh, so just click on the link in your email newsletter or scan the QR code in your bulletin to get connected with that. I should also back up to Pulpit Exchange. The other great thing is on February 20th, we're having an all-church potluck between their church and our church uh, uh, here at St. Luke uh, in the late afternoon. More details are to come, but just so you know, I mean, it's, it's really going to be fantastic as we continue this growing relationship with that fantastic congregation. Um, right now, media is available to any and all of us, uh, any of your friends, for yourself. It's a free uh, opportunity for you to get connected with a resource that's rich with wisdom and insight uh, biblically um, to help you in your spiritual development. Uh, so if you're not connected to, to Right Now Media already, you can go to, uh, I think there's a Q, there's a website there. Uh, you can go to our website, it'll connect you right to Right Now Media uh, if once you click the link on their website. There's also a QR code uh, in your bulletin um, and so on. Lastly, two more, th two more announcements. Uh, we make, uh, every year, don't, we make uh, blankets of fleece uh, to be used for kids in foster care. And so we have a group of people who do that. Becky Tyson heads that up. Well, they're collecting fleece right now. And so if you'd like to purchase a couple yards of fleece, uncut in fun colors to be made into blankets, um, please do so. Uh, that, th th those donations are welcome. There's going to be a blanket tying on Saturday, March 12th. The time and all those details will come later, but just so you know, it's going to be an opportunity for you to make some blankets as well, but right now we're just collecting the fleece. And lastly, uh, we mentioned the prayers George King. Some of you might know the Kings, George and Susan King. George is a pilot, and unfortunately last night his plane went down near St. Louis. Um, they found the debris. They didn't find any George or his partner. So uh, they're still in the midst of that, that uh, work. So uh, we pray for Diane and George um, and Diane as she waits, really, as we find out word more about that. So that was the announcements for today. Um, stay connected with us. We're so grateful that we can be together as a congregation in the mission God's called us to. Please stand as we receive the Lord's blessing and conclude our time together in worship. My friends, may the wisdom of God, that is Christ himself, fill you with that same wisdom and bring blessing to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. All your ways are good. All your ways are sure. I will trust in you alone. Higher than my sight. High above my life. I will trust in you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. Where you move, I'll move. I will follow you. If you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. I will 
First of all, we're so grateful to be all together today. And as a service uh, this week to our, our preschool, if you're able to help stack chairs, we so appreciate the help. But we, uh, more importantly, we want to encourage you to not just run out the door, but, it, but linger a little bit, say hello, catch up to some friends, meet somebody new, and receive this uh, declaration to depart. Go in peace. Walk in the Lord's wisdom. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a wonderful week.